My name is Ryan Leverant, a recent graduate of the Albany Medical College, and I will be presenting a case today of an arterioenteric fistula. I wrote this case with the help of Dr. Luke Mammon and Dr. Christine Cooley. This case begins with a 47-year-old man who is presenting with a history of antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, tachyatsu arteritis with mechanical aortic valve replacement, and supraceliac aortic to bilateral renal artery bypass grafts with PTFE after failed bilateral renal artery stents, with a history of renal revascularization who is presenting with abdominal pain, altered mental status, hematemesis, and hypotension. Prior to arrival, this patient experiences an episode of syncope and was promptly intubated by EMS. Axial CT images of the abdomen without oral or IV contrast demonstrate high density fluid within the dependent stomach as demonstrated by the yellow arrows. Mild distension can be seen as well throughout the small bowel loops on the right side of the screen. Also, note the densely calcified mid-abdominal aorta. Axial three-phase CT images of the abdomen from left to right were performed in the non-contrast, arterial, and portal venous phases without oral contrast. On the non-contrast image, the third portion of the duodenum abuts the patient's left renal artery bypass graft, as demonstrated by the blue arrowhead. When we turn our attention to the middle image, the arterial phase, there is an enhancing outpouching of the contrast, demonstrated by the yellow circle at the left renal artery bypass graft, which protrudes into the third duodenum. This is again seen in the portal venous phase on the right side of the screen and highlighted by the yellow circle. Here we see an axial CT slice of the abdomen without oral contrast in the portal venous phase, which demonstrates high density material layering into the dependent duodenum. We highlighted this with a white arrow. The coronal CT image of the abdomen and pelvis in the arterial phase without oral contrast again demonstrates an enhancing high attenuation oval outpouching, which is shown in the yellow circle. This area of high attenuation arises from the distal segment of the left renal artery bypass graft at the level of the third duodenum, although the third duodenum is not shown on the slice. This distal segment of the left ar renal artery bypass graft is annotated with a blue arrow. The final diagnosis was an arterioenteric fistula. This fistula resulted in a large volume hemorrhage within the distal esophagus, stomach, and the small and large bowels as far as the mid-transverse colon. Active extravasation was noted from the left aortorenal bypass graft into the third portion of the duodenum and CTA revealed a flattened IVC. This was related to the severe hypotension and the patient presentation of syncope prior to arrival. Top differential diagnoses include ruptured esophageal varices or perigraft infection. In the case of esophageal varices, dilated submucosal veins arise in the esophagus as a result of increased collateral blood flow from the portal system to the azygous system. On CT scan, expect to see serpinginous enhancing tubular collateral vessels surrounding the distal esophagus. Varices are often associated with cirrhosis and or portal hypertension. In regards to a paragraft infection, this is a complication of endovascular abdominal aortic aneurysm repair in which inflammatory stranding would be expected surrounding the abdominal aorta. These infections lack some of the distinguishing features of the arterioenteric fistula and may include ectopic gas in the, vas in the vasculature. As part of the take-home message in this case, remember that this arterioenteric fistula is an abdominal connection between an artery and the GI tract and can be de novo or after graft repair and or infection. The most common location is at the distal duodenum and the most common risk factor is an abdominal aortic aneurysm. CT scan is the reference standard for imaging due to its widespread availability, rapid acquisition, and high spatial and contrast resolution. While MR imaging may reveal the diagnosis, it is limited by the availability in the emergency setting and its long acquisition time. These fistulas are a surgical emergency and are associated with a very high rate of mortality. Surgical goals include the control of bleeding, debridement, and revascularization. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation.